Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Monterey 12.4. This is available to all macOS Monterey supported devices and is available at the same time everywhere around the world. Now Apple also released a Mac Studio display update and we'll take a look at what the camera looks like before and after this update to see if it's actually a little bit better. Now, along with this, Apple also released iOS 15.5, iPadOS 15.5, watchOS 8.6, tvOS 15.5, and HomePodOS 15.5. All of those are available now. And this update came in at 2.29 gigabytes. That's on my M1 Ultra Mac Studio, and isn't a huge update considering that it's a Mac update. So typically they seem to be a little bit larger than that. Let's go ahead and close this. We'll take a look at the build number and then talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple here in the upper left and then click on about this Mac. As you can see, we're on version 12.4. And if we click on that, we can see the build number here of 21F79. This is the same build number that we had with the release candidate. So if you're a beta tester or developer, it's the exact same version. Now, as far as what's new in this update, well, Apple did not update a whole lot here, but there are a couple things to note. If we go into our system preferences, under system preferences, if we go to desktop and screensaver, then look at our wallpapers. If we scroll down, you'll see that we have the Mac Studio wallpaper. So this is the one that they included when they released the Mac Studio and they never released it to the public. So now it's available for everyone and you can use that if you'd like. Also, if we go back and click on displays, you'll see here that we have universal control. Universal control is no longer in beta. This is true on iPad OS 15.5 as well. They removed the beta marker where it said it was on the beta. So it's no longer in beta. And also one thing to note that's a known issue is this particular update needs to have Mac OS 12.4 and iPad OS 15.5. If you have previous versions on either of them, they're not compatible. So make sure you update both if you're wanting to use universal control. Now, if we close this and then we go into the podcasts app, then we go up to podcasts and then preferences. There's a new preference here for automatically download. It says, listen to new episodes offline with automatic downloads, free up storage by setting a limit on how many automatic downloads are kept. So you'll see, we have all new episodes. If we click on that, or we can click off and just stream everything. So we have off latest episode per show to just keep those two, three, five, or 10 episodes per show, the last 24 hours, seven days, 14 days, or 30 days. So those are some new options within the podcast app. And this was also updated on iOS 15.5 in podcast settings as well. Now, the other update in this update has to do with a studio display. So if you have a studio display, that's what I'm using here. You can see the update and check for it by again, going to your Apple and then going to system preferences and then clicking on software update. You'll see an update for the studio display. Once it installs, it will be updated and you can check if it's updated again by going to the Apple, going to about this Mac and then clicking on system report. Under system report, click on graphics slash displays, and you'll see here it says Apple M1 Ultra, and then down below it says studio display, and then also gives our version, which is 15.5, or the same build we have with iOS 19F77. That lets you know that you're up to date and have the latest version. Now let me show you what it looks like before the update, and then we'll take a look at what it looks like now after we've updated. This is the studio displays camera before any sort of firmware update. So this is what it's like right when you buy it and take it out of the box. This is the studio display after the Mac OS 12.4 update and studio display 15.5 update. So I think the colors look a little bit better. I think the framing is better. And also I'm not sure if the audio is any different, but overall I just think it definitely has better skin tones and things like that, but I'm not sure that it's a huge leap and it's still a bit grainy, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As far as bug fixes, Apple has not said what they've actually fixed. They just say that there's bug fixes, but there is one resolved issue if we look at the release notes from the previous update. And it says they fixed an issue so the developers using StoreKit 2 can now initiate a subscription offer purchase for a product that the consumer currently subscribes to. So that's been fixed. And then that other issue that is known has to do with universal control. Like I mentioned, you need to be on Mac OS 12.4 and iPad OS 15.5 for those to be compatible. 
prior versions will still work together, but if you're going to update either one of your iPhones or iPads or anything else, you need to make sure that you have Mac OS 12.4. There's also one additional developer facing issue as well. Now also Apple updated security in this update. In fact, there's a ton of security updates. If we go to Apple's security website, you can see here, if we scroll down, not only did they update Mac OS Monterey 12.4, but also Mac OS Big Sur 11.6.6, and also security update 2022-004 for Mac OS Catalina. So all of those are available if you're not on Monterey. If we click on Mac OS Monterey, you'll see that there are a ton of different updates, over 50 or so different updates that are security related updates for this particular build. Now, if we scroll down, you can see there's additional ones for SMB and WebKit and much, much more. If we take a look at maybe the one for zip, you can see that it says impact processing a maliciously crafted file may lead to a denial of service. They fixed this. That's the description with a denial of service issue was addressed with improved state handling. And then you can see the CVE number here and learn more about this. So tons of different security updates. And of course that leads me to, should you install Mac OS Monterey? And at this point, if you're already on Mac OS Monterey, any of the prior versions, I would highly recommend it. Now, if you're on Catalina or Big Sur and don't want to update yet, make sure that you install those security updates I showed you before. Then you'll be up to date as far as security. But as far as Mac OS Monterey, I would highly recommend you install this. Also, one thing to note is universal control works much better. In fact, it works right now as I scroll to the edge of my screen, it jumps over to my iPad and it was pretty instant to connect. So it definitely is working better than before. As far as performance and everything else, I haven't noticed a single difference with that. And battery life, well, I don't use it on a Mac too much with a battery. I typically leave my MacBooks plugged in and this is a Mac studio. So you won't see the battery option, but I really haven't noticed any difference. I've been running the betas on different versions and haven't had any issues whatsoever. As far as future versions of Mac OS, I would expect Mac OS 12.5 betas as soon as this week or next week to go along with iOS betas as well. Typically we'll have those all the way up until the next version, even though we'll have Mac OS 13 probably on June 6th at WWDC, where we'll see some new features and maybe some new changes as well. Typically we'll have the next version of Mac OS along with the current version with beta updates all the way up until a final release of Mac OS 13 sometime in September or early October. That's typically what we'll see. So we're waiting for those updates. Hopefully we'll see those very soon and maybe some additional features, especially with Mac OS 13. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper I used before, I'll leave an iPhone version in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.